Hello everyone and welcome to the Safety Artisan and today we're going to be talking about system of systems hazard analysis. So looking at what we've got coming up. So we look at the purpose of system of systems and by the way if you're wondering what that is what I'm talking about is when we take different things uh, that we've de developed elsewhere, you know, platforms, electronic systems, whatever it might be, and we put them together, usually with humans gluing the system together somewhere, it must be said, to, to make it all tick and fit together. And hopefully that will illustrate far better than what we're you know just dis reading out the description so things we don't get from each system in isolation and this task is going to produce special requirements to deal with these hazards which otherwise would not exist because yeah until we put the things together and start using them for something new we've not done this before and a big part of this as i said earlier we tend to use people to glue these collections, these portfolios of systems together, and humans are fantastic at doing that. Not always the ideal way of doing it, but sometimes it's the only way of doing it within the constraints that we've got. So the, the issue of managing all of those extraneous things and getting the traceability uh, goes up you know it's multiplied with every system you've got so part two of the task description the contractor will assess the risk of each hazard and recommend mitigation measures to eliminate the hazards or very rare so whoever does the analysis the standard assumes it's a contractor shall document the results to include you've got to describe the system of systems the physical and functional characteristics of the system of systems, which is very important, or perhaps then you've got to uh, uh, you've got to take extra care. And then basically, it says when you get more detail of the individual systems, uh, you need to supply that when it becomes available. The purchaser has probably got to do some analysis of their own in order to work all this stuff out. And I know I say this every time with these tasks, but it is so important. So we've got to impose the requirement for the tasks. They are not, they do not have specialist technical knowledge in some of these areas, or maybe they're not human factor specialists. We need somebody in, some human factor specialists, some uh, user representatives, people who understand how the system will be used in real life and what the real world constraints are. SOS is very much about giving capability, an example, an illustration, and uh, as they used to say in children's TV, here's one I made earlier, because a few years ago I uh, had to produce a safety case uh, report, so what we were asked to do is to assure the safety of a system. Some of the systems were already in service, but we are putting them together in a new combination. So here's a little illustration of our system of systems. So bottom right hand corner, we've got the ship uh, with lots of people on the ship. And in fact, that's often the way it's done. And then lastly, as I alluded to earlier, the aircraft and the ship do actually interact in, in a limited way. But of course, it can, it's a, a physical interaction. So you can actually hurt people and um, we'll, we'll have a session on how to do GSN another time and then so that's a very basic very simple statement and then underneath we've got four sub goals we aim to show that each system equipment is safe to operate that each so it's ready to be operated safely then each one is safe in operation. So it can be operated safely with real people, etc. So first of all, each component system is safe to operate. Now, you would think that double checking existing systems would be a foregone conclusion. So as I've said before, we had pilots and we had 
radar air traffic talk down operators. They captured them in what's called a hierarchical task analysis and they did some analysis of the tasks and what could go wrong. And broadly speaking, the answer was yes, it works very well. So the operator could see other traffic apart from the plane they were they were guiding in and this was a non-trivial exercise because ships have large numbers of electronic systems and there's a very involved process to go through to check that a new piece of kit doesn't interfere with anything else or vice versa and uh, and again that's a very specialist area and then we've got you know does the system interfere with the aircraft and the aircraft with the system Classic mistakes really with systems design is to design a difficult to operate system and then just expect the operator to cope. And that can be from things as seemingly trivial as amusement park rides. And even there, you know, which was a very complex system for two operators, neither of whom had total authority over the system or to be honest really had the full picture of what was going on and in fact that was the case with this so that's quite a challenge for system systems and it's something that needs thinking about up front and then finally uh, as I've, I've said remember the bigger picture it's very easy when you're doing analysis and you've made certain assumptions and you've set the scope it's very easy to get fixated on that scope and on those assumptions and forget that the real world is out there and is unpredictable. There were lots of these things. And, you know, one example I mentioned was that with the new radar, the radar operator does not see any more, any traffic other than the, the, um, the aircraft it, that the, is being guided in. But that doesn't mean that our, that our analysis has, has captured everything or that it's completely captured what goes on in the real world because that's very difficult to do with such a complex system of systems. And we, we need to remember the big picture. Um, but this presentation is copyright of the Safety Artisan. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the link there, but uh, you can just search for Safety Artisan in YouTube and you'll find us. So subscribe there to get free video lessons and also free previews of paid content.